you're going to have to identify elements of Gothic literature in these stories. So you want to make sure you're aware of what these elements are and how to identify those. And that's what we're going to talk about today. As we go through this PowerPoint, through these Google Slides, you're going to see certain things highlighted in yellow, um, in yellow text. Those are the things you want to write down on your elements sheet that you have. So our first element of Gothic literature is setting. Um, setting is time and place. So anything that's creepy about the time and place is Gothic setting. That's what you want to write down. Here's some examples of Gothic settings. So we have this dilapidated building right here. Uh, we have an old rundown mansion or castle that looks kind of creepy. And then um, this kind of run down looking inside bare, dusty, dirty um, inside of this mansion. All of those are good examples of a Gothic setting. The second element that we have is metonymy. This one is, is classically a little bit more difficult for students. So don't get tripped up on the word metonymy. Metonymy just means using a word associated with something to refer to it. So an example of that would be um, the well-known phrase, the pen is mightier than the sword. Um, pen is just referring to written word. You're using a word associated with something to refer to it. So a pen is associated with writing. So it's saying the written word is more powerful than the sword, sword referring to violence or war. The written word is more powerful than violence or war. So you're using a word associated with something like pen to refer to that thing. Um, you could also think about the crown. If people refer to the crown, they might be talking about wealth and power. So the crown is associated with wealth and power. That's what they're referring to. The way we are going to use this is looking at the metonymy of gloom and horror. So it's really just a metaphor helps lead us as readers to understand that there's going to be mystery. There's going to be danger, something supernatural coming. This is the stuff that you're going to write down for metonymy on your note sheet, uh, metonymy of gloom and horror in action. Think about the classic elements that show up in scary stories. You might have a thunderstorm. Um, you might have footsteps approaching, doors creaking, ruins of buildings, howling wind, crazed laughter, thunder and lightning. All these things show up in scary stories. They're classic things that show up. That's what you write down for metonymy of gloom and horror. Don't be afraid to ask questions about this one if you get stumped on it. The next element is supernatural. Anytime you see otherworldly characters or things like ghost schools, goblins, things that are supernatural, you want to write those down in that slot um, for that story. The one caveat for this, sometimes the supernatural things are real. Maybe the story that we're reading actually has a ghost in it, but a lot of times they're in the person's mind. It's their imagination. They're a little bit paranoid. Even if we know it's in their mind, if the character thinks it's real, it counts as supernatural. Okay. So if a character is going a little bit crazy and they think a ghost is following them and they really believe that, but we know it's their friend dressed up as a ghost, it still counts as supernatural as long as the character believes that it is. Next one is legends, omens, and prophecy. Anytime you see ancient stories, curses that the readers and the characters are aware of, jot those down. Um, the first story that we read is going to be the legend of Sleepy Hollow. So if you think about the legend there, uh, kind of gives it away in the title. Please note that it has to be the reader and the character being aware of this. If you know of some random legend that no one else is really aware of, it doesn't count. It needs to be something that both the reader and the character are, are aware of. They probably talk about it in the story if it's one of these. So think about a black cat being bad luck, uh, a raven being a, a bad omen, uh, Friday the 13th being a day when bad stuff happens all of that stuff. Those are uh, legends, omens, prophecy. Those are examples of that. Again, if it's one of these, they will probably talk about it in the story that we're reading. You can watch that example from The Simpsons to see an example of that as well. Uh, next element is exaggerated emotions. In this um, aspect of Gothic literature, 
the protagonist is at risk of going insane. Um, they are probably really paranoid. They might be experiencing extreme emotions, anger, sorrow, surprise, terror. The thing you want to write down for this, if you see instances of those emotions, that's what you want to write down. So we'll see some emotional speeches, characters panicking, um, raw nerves, crying, things like that. Write those down. The specific instance when that happens, um, that's what you want to record on your sheet for exaggerated emotions. Damsel in distress. Um, in our stories, we don't see this one quite as much. And we don't, I don't think we see this so much in 21st century America, but typically damsel in distress is a fair maiden, a beautiful woman who is pursued by an evil villain. If you see that happen in a story, write down who the damsel in distress is. Um, typically or classically, the damsel in distress is helpless, worthless, but is very pretty or very attractive. Essentially, that's their job in the story. Their job is to get kidnapped, to get taken, um, and then they, the knight in shining armor, so to speak, has somebody to rescue. Um, that's their role, which could be problematic um, when you think about uh, gender in the 21st century, right? We, we don't really want to see women as these helpless creatures. So I think that's why we see that changing. Um, the villain in these types of stories is usually powerful, impulsive, tyrannical, and often um, a male as well. So keep that in mind, damsel in distress. Anytime you see a beautiful woman, a fair maiden who is pursued by an evil villain, um, you have a damsel in distress. The last one is gloom and doom. We're thinking about the mood of a story here, the emotion. Uh, how does the story make you feel? The thing you want to write down on your sheet is the moment when it seems that evil or darkness will prevail in the story. So really, what is the darkest point of the story when it seems like evil is going to win out? When you come to that, jot that down. So in these gothic stories, the, the good guy doesn't always win, um, which is pretty intriguing. There are some examples from film that you can take a look at that we looked at in class. See if you can identify some of those gothic elements from some classic gothic uh, stories and movies as well. If you have questions on this, please let me know. Um, but I'm excited to identify some of these elements in the literature that we take a look at.